morning. Well, it's been a while since we've had videos out. So if you've seen our clips, the last three clips, we're gonna stitch them together into one regular sized episode. Uh, so if you've already seen those clips, you might wanna skip over this, but I don't want you to miss the news that we are gonna be putting out more clips now. Uh, it's winter, as you can see, and we have time to make videos. So that's what we're gonna be doing. Every week we should have new clips and new videos. We're making the clips because sometimes I think people wanna see just one thing that we're doing. Um, and we may get you know, a wider audience if we just break up the clips into the specific task that's being handled. But if you like to watch a full episode, we will stitch them all together into a, you know, uh, a usual week, weekly episode like we have been doing. So uh, subscribe, like, do all that stuff. Please share us with your friends. We're making these videos. We'd like people to see them. We think uh, our project to grow our own food this year uh, is, is, a, is, is one that would be interesting to a lot of people. So please, if, if you can think of anybody who might be interested in uh, hearing about how we grew all our own food this year, please, please, please uh, share us with them. Thanks a lot. Thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned. chicken hutch or a chicken caravan so I can move them out to other fields and have them dig up the now cut down um, vegetable matter. So the plan is I'm going to build a chicken caravan but I need to build it quickly so it's not going to be very fancy. I'm kind of challenging myself to build it out of parts I already have on hand and uh, doing it uh, fairly quickly so let's get to work. Basically, um, so I have these rafters, and then I put these spurs on top. I'm going to put one more set, um, and then down here I attached a foot of chicken wire. Um, on the bottom, I have a half-inch screen, uh, so their droppings will fall through. But I'll put some straw down there. Up here, this is the lay box, and I've got a little door here. Uh, that opens so I can get the eggs once the roof is on, in theory, there we go, so I can reach in and grab, grab the eggs, close that back up. Uh, so that's up high and dry and dark, and then uh, there's roosts down here for them to sit on, and I've got a door here that opens, and that'll go down when there's no mic in the way. Um, and the cool thing is, uh, it's got two feet back here, and on the front, looks like a wheelbarrow, Let's see, it's like a little bit to turn around in this space, but it's six feet long, so it's not the easiest thing to maneuver in a packed garage, but uh, for the most part, I can just walk it like a wheelbarrow, which is kind of nice. And that was the plan all along. Ideally, I would have two wheels, one on either side, it would make it more stable, so I'm gonna have to add some extra legs here. It's a little unstable just on the wheel because it's an old rickety wheel. But for transportation purposes, it'll be great. Um, here's that door to get the eggs from. Very nice. So, uh, now it just needs um, a little more in the rafter department. And it just needs to be skinned with a little bit of a leftover uh, aluminum uh, flashing. And we'll be good to go.
Okay, now it's time to mix up some chicken feed. Never mind the noise in the background. That's um, those are peanuts being ground uh, into uh, bits of peanut. So uh, what I've got are uh, black sunflower seeds. I've got ground up corn. I've got whole kernel corn. I've got grit. This is just ground up uh, eggshells so that they get more calcium. And I've got peanuts. And this is going to make a, uh, a feed for my chickens. They eat about a quarter pound a day a bird. Um, but I'm feeding less than that right now because they're eating a lot of greens. So let's uh, start mixing this up. Who needs a petting zoo? He's feeding the chickens wood chips. They don't seem very excited about them. <laughs> I threw the bad tomatoes in already. So much stuff for them to eat. <laughs> the chickens are still enjoying their time out here in the back 40, clearing the field for me, fertilizing with lots of nitrogen, getting it ready for next year. <laughs> so what's going on right now is the, the mean girls click, the, the dominant chickens, are cleaning up the feed. The lower chickens are eating the apple scraps from yesterday. Occasionally one of the higher ranking chickens will run over and scare them away from the apples. Because even though they're not eating them, they don't want the lower ones to have them. Here she comes. Unfortunately, I don't have a horse to pull a plow, so I have to be the horse. Uh, it's September, but I already have to be putting in the wheat and the rye for next year. So what I'm doing is, this is their old potato patch. I am scratching the surface. I'm not plowing. I'm just digging up the surface a little bit so that I can plant the uh, wheat in, in rows, and then pack it back down and cover it with mulch. And hopefully, next year we'll have a really good bumper crop of, of uh, wheat and rye. So this is about a quarter acre. It took me three hours to turn over by hand. Obviously, it's not a full plowing. It's more of a, just a light tilling. So this will be my wheat field for next year. Um, I'm going to plant in different densities to see what works best for the type of wheat I'm growing, which is a heritage breed of wheat. It's not a modern wheat. Um, and now over here, I still have to plow this all up or till this all up so that I can put my rye in here. 
and I'm going to till it up today so that my chickens, who are on vacation uh, back in this area, uh, will have time to dig in and uh, eat bugs, kind of turn things over a little better. They'll be my assistants in this area. Hey Sid, how you doing? <laughs> I'm going to go out and plant wheat, but um, I don't have a seeder. Traditionally, or not traditionally, but modern uh, wheat is sown by having a big uh, seeder uh, that gets towed behind a tractor, and it has uh, you know dozens of rows that it drops seeds down at a regular interval, um, and it'll do a wide swath at a time, and you go back and forth. I don't have that, so I have two options available to me. One, I could broadcast, and broadcast is literally just walking, with a um, bucket or a uh, apron full of seed and throwing it as you step and each step you throw a handful that way it gets spread out evenly or somewhat evenly. The problem with broadcast is it doesn't get incorporated deeply and evenly into the ground so the seeds emerge at different times, um, the birds get more of them, it's just um, a less efficient system um, than uh, direct seeding and so what I have is this seeder. But this cedar is built for um, garden vegetables like squash or um, beets, carrots, things like that. And what this does is as this turn, and I used this in an earlier video uh, last spring planting out peas and flax, this turns, turns a little hopper, it turns little cups, and it picks up seeds and drops them at regular intervals. They drop down this chute into the ground at an even depth um, and then are covered over. So it's basically what is pulled behind a tractor but on a single scale rather than dozens and dozens of rows at a time. The problem is they don't make these for wheat. They don't make these discs that spread out the seeds um, for wheat. So I have to use the existing ones but I need to figure out how many seeds is it dropping per inch because or per foot because I want to have a uniform distribution of seeds that um, is closely conforming to what is recommended. And I'm going to try different planting uh, densities to see what works best. And to, to do that, I'm using the one foot tiles on our floor in our kitchen to gauge seed distribution rates. So I'm out here planting wheat using my little cedar. Like I said, a tractor usually can do 12 rows at a time, but I can only do one. And what I'm doing, because I like to experiment and there's not really good literature out there for small scale growers, is I'm planting at different densities. So here I'm planting at about 20 seeds a square foot. There I'm planting at 40 to 45 seeds per square foot. And over there, uh, it's much less. It's uh, 10 and even four. Uh, seeds per square foot so we'll see how the different densities stack up next year it, it said that when you plant 11 pounds per acre um, that's ideal uh, for this type of wheat but it seems really low with this weed load I might need more um, to plant I, I might need to sow more to crush uh, these weeds and just to be as friendly as we can to pollinators and other insects this strip here is where I put all the wild milkweed and other seeds uh, that I've had to pull to make this field. This year we had them prop, crop up around all the potatoes and it was really hard to avoid them um, when we we're weeding the potatoes and things like that. So this year 
we're, next year we're going to try and have them in a nice defined strip. So fingers crossed that that works. And now after sewing, I have to knock down all of these high points because the seeds are in between them. So when I knock this down, and get rid of this vegetable matter. When I knock this down, it covers the seeds. done recently is I built a chicken coop and now the chickens are living back in the uh, what I call the back 40 this is where my corn my potatoes flax and other things were trying to grow I took them all down with a scythe last week which I, I think I had on the video and uh, and now I put the chickens in it what the chickens are doing is they're digging through all the soil they're flattening everything out they're eating a lot of the seed heads from the weeds which is good they're pooping on everything which adds nitrogen to the soil and generally just being chickens. Um, this also gives them fresh things to eat so I can feed them less because right now I'm into feed that I'm making myself and I don't have free access to as much feed as I need so uh, it's good to supplement their food with as much green stuff as I can and right now you can probably see some of the roosters the new roosters the white ones uh, running around chasing the girls they've gotten old enough where I just saw one of them mounting one of the hens and that means they're mature enough to butcher so uh, probably in the next video or two, um, at the end, I'll put it at the very end after the credits. So those of you who don't want to watch it don't have to, uh, but I'm going to butcher uh, those uh, roosters and uh, keep one rooster, Sid, our rooster from last year, their father. Uh, we're going to keep him around because he's a big, nice boy. Um, but the others we raised to eat. So we'll be, uh, I don't want to be feeding them all winter anyway. So uh, we're going to uh, butcher them. Um, I'm speaking of feeding I'm giving the mosquitoes a bite so um, I'm gonna get the rest of this rye in right now and then be done for the day and this electric fence over here that I've put up with netting to keep the chickens out of the rye field is live so if you watch closely maybe you'll see me get shocked let's hope not notice that I'm dragging one of my feet it's always the foot on this side I'm knocking the furrow or I'm knocking the dirt into the furrow so that I don't have to walk by with the with the rake one more time um, it's a little slower but then I only have to go through once There's something about plowing and planting a field and then crossing your fingers that in almost a year you'll have enough wheat that you can grind it into flour and make enough bread to last you another year. Without the availability of fossil fuels, we're kind of making use of a lot of resources that otherwise would just go to waste, right? So um, I'm out here today gathering wild grapes. These wild grapes are growing on apple trees in our orchard uh, that we're taking care of. Um, this orchard and these grapes have largely been abandoned and not taken care of. And that's why they've been allowed to grow over these apple trees and in some cases kill them. So um, this year, my goal is to harvest as much of the wild grapes as I can, make uh, wine and jelly, and then I have to take out these wild grape uh, vines because, again, they're killing the uh, apple trees, which are, you know, more valuable in terms of, of, of what we need to survive here. Uh, and they'll become more and more valuable as the years goes on as, 
as you know the, the things that are available to us now uh, are no longer um, as easy to get wild grapes are not your table grapes they are uh, they have a lot of tannins so they have a lot of uh, tartness to them is a nice way of saying it and they have really big seeds they're perfectly good and edible but they're not just something you'd put on the table and eat um, and so making sugar or excuse me making jam and wine out of them takes a little bit of a, a different tactic Now I have to take these grapes from the bucket, pop the stems off, weigh them out. I need 20 pounds of grapes, I'm making wild grape wine. Um, never tried it before, but I happen to have the stuff laying around because I bought a wine making kit so I could use all the equipment to make cider and mead. Turns out it also works for wine. So imagine that. All right, so oh, here it goes. Okay, so after I stripped all the grapes and cracked and mushed them all, I put them in a sack um, and added uh, sugar and water. Um, I'll, I'll post the, a link to the instructions I'm following online. And then I had to add uh, Camden tablets, and those kill the wild yeasts. In a perfect world, I would just let the yeast or I'd let the, the natural yeast do their thing. But I want to not experiment my first time making um, wild grape wine so I'm following the instructions exactly so I added the Camden tablets that kills the yeast 20, 24 hours later um, then I pitched the yeast unfortunately I had filled it up too high and it would have bubbled over so I have a little extra in here and today it is really bubbling um, and you can see over the night where it must have really bubbled up an inch or two and it's left residue on the side um, and this one it's uh, less bubbly because the sack is still in there with all the t with all of the grapes, so I'm turning it around. But the sack is really buoyant because all of the, the yeast is adding uh, CO2 to it. So uh, it's been two days. Uh, it's going to be another three to five days, and then this will be done. And now I'm pretty much taking on the same thing again, uh, but this time I'm making wild grape jam. And the neat thing about wild grape jam is. These wild grapes have so much pectin on them that I don't need to add pectin. Usually uh, one adds pectin, which is kind of a naturally occurring fruit. <coughs> yes, a fruit, a fruit binder. And that's what actually makes it into jelly. It makes that jelly <coughs> cohesion, if you like. What do you have to add? With these wild grapes, just have to pick the stems off. Unfortunately, I can't shortcut them like I did with the wine. Okay, and now I'll mash up these uh, grapes that I've collected. Never mind the complete mess down there. The young boy has found our tea hutch, and every day he likes to take all the tea out and inventory it because, you know, gives him something to do. And I'm mashing it right now instead of setting it, you know, using a blender or a immersion blender because I don't want to bust open the. Um, 
the seeds because the seeds are much more bitter. I just want to get these things mashed down, release a lot of the water so that when I start to simmer these, they'll just cook themselves. I'm going to add a little bit of water, probably a couple cups. So uh, we've got uh, three and a half uh, pints of, of grape jelly. Uh, with the, what was left over. So out of 10 gallons of grapes, I made five gallons of wine and three and a half um, pints of grape. Now it's time to transfer the fermented uh, apple juice, the early wine, the young wine, into a carboy. And that way it can finish fermenting in the basement. It's so purple it looks fake. So that was the extra, and now I have the rest, the main bulk of my wine in this one here, but I have to pull the pulp bag out and let it <laughs> drip out, yeah. Well, that's what this week's episode. Stay tuned on our channel. We will have uh, new videos out, I hope every week uh, now coming up, uh, with episodes hopefully to cap off the week, uh, depending on how busy we get. Mm -hmm.